So what we're going to do next is, is we're actually going to prove that Q is a state function, or excuse me, is a path function. The reason we're doing this is, is one, to prove to you something that I said is true all semester long. And another thing which will lead into, uh, in the next chapter, we're going we're gonna to start talking about the second law of thermodynamics, which is all about entropy. But we're going to find something weird associated with entropy and heat exchanges. Uh, this is a path function, but as soon as you divide it by T, it is now a state. Before we get there, though, let's prove that this is a path function. So, my question to you guys is, is, we know a couple of different techniques to try and show something as a state function. How do we prove if a function is a state function? Yeah, exact differentials. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, exact differentials. What's another way we could do to figure out if something is or is not a state function? Yep, exactly. So you would consider the number of steps. You add more steps, doesn't change the value. Any other ways? Steps. The result changes. And one last one, which we haven't talked about much yet, but we will when it comes to engines. Anybody know the other? you look at a cycle, a reversible cycle, the changes in, in uh, state function should be zero. Okay, the one we're going to elect to use is more mathematical. We're going to pick that guy. Okay, so uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these, so let's try to refresh our brains. If we have some function x plus h x y y then we have to show the partial of g with respect to y and the x constant what has to be equal have to show that it, that is true, right? Does this tell us if it's a path or a state function? Yep. If true, we have a state function. If it's not true, what do we got? Yeah, a path. A path dependent function. Okay, so let's go about trying to prove uh, if Q is a path function or not, we need something, a differential that looks like this form. I always suggest to go back to the basics in this class because you can derive anything from the initial parts. That's the beauty of thermodynamics and also the horrible part of thermodynamics. Um, let's start from the first law. Thank you. 
and what's du equal to? here are we interested in finding out if it is or is not a state function? DQ. DQ. So let's isolate DQ by itself. What's DQ equal to? Yep. Okay. Uh, we have previously shown several times Now, show that Q is a state function. Given we have this form of the differential, given that information that we've used in the past to so show an exact differential, try to prove the partial of what so what would be our g of x here cv because remember cv is not always a constant it is under certain conditions uh, so we have cv take the differential with respect to what not t in this case. We want the other one, right? Be holding what constant? Yep. Because that's our, our g of x term, right? Is equal to what? Partial of what's our h of x and y? P. Yep, p, t, and then one constant. Yeah. So we got to try and show that that is true. What are we going to find out, though? Well, it's not going to work out, but we have to prove it. Okay, which one of those looks like the easiest to deal with first? Well, what's that? The one on the right. One on the right? Yeah, I like the one on the right more, too. Okay. Let's assume we have an ideal gas. What's the equation of state for an ideal gas again? this guy, right? How do you suggest a manipulator equation the state around? To plug in and solve for this thing. Yep, divide by volume. So what's pressure equal to? Over V. do is take the derivative of this guy with respect to what variable? Yep. Yeah. 
what's the derivative of that going to be? Yeah. Good pick, Shannon. Easy one. I like that one. This guy, we got to do some work with. Okay, before we do anything with this one. equal to a partial derivative holding something constant that we've done in the past. So heat capacities, what are we looking at changing with heat capacities? Temperature, so where's temperature going to go here? Yep, bottom. Okay, CV, CV was related to which state function? Yep, internal energy, so what's going up top here? That little V, what are we holding constant? Oh, yeah. Okay, what we're going to do is a little bit of mathematical trickery to make something work out to what we want. Uh, we're going to use, uh, what is it, Clairaut's theorem? with respect to y, some sort of function that depends on x and y. We do this. These two things are additive. So you get a second derivative of top of f, partial of x, partial of y. What it basically states is, is it doesn't matter which order you conduct that uh, differential. wanted to do was to figure out this guy. In reality, what was CV equal to again? manipulate some things around here. We could basically swap these differentials, right? It's telling me to shut up. So I want to move partial of t out. What, what property is now constant on the outside bracket? The inside bracket was constant. And what goes down here? All right. How the hell did that help us out? That doesn't really look like it made things any easier. Any ideas? Anything maybe that we talked about in the past associated with isothermal conditions? Yeah, what was that? Yeah, U is zero. Changing U 
will be zero. So this, because we have a, what do we have to assume though? Isothermic. Yep, isothermic, which that's what this differential is. What type of gas do we need? Ideal, monoatomic. Therefore, this is equal to zero. Okay. This was our goal. We were trying to show that these things are equal to one another. Are they? No. This bit over here does not equal NR over B. Therefore, what type of function is Q? Probably the better way to say this is Q is not a state function. Well, we only have two types of functions we're talking about. Now, the weird thing. If you do this exact same thing, but you, you divide by T, it suddenly becomes a state function. A new state function called entropy. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. This time we showed, hey, if you have an isothermal system and you assume a monoatomic ideal gas, a lot of times if it's isothermal, you can make du zero. And we showed that uh, heat is a path function and is not a state function. Okay. Are there any questions right now? Okay. We're going to spend about one more week on the first law, and then we're going to transition to the second law. Second law is way more useful to chemists than the first law. We use the first law all the time with enthalpy and stuff, but what we really care about, we really care about entropy and what other big thermodynamic property we, do we talk about in every other class. Gibbs free energy. We're going to train, we have to talk about entropy first, then we get to Gibbs, and then we, we know everything there is associated.